going to have to act if we want to live in a different world. Incoming transmission. Hey friends and folks, Flybase is here, and welcome to week 3 of the Red Alert Global League Master Series. So in case you're unfamiliar with this and want to get a quick rundown, what this is all about is um, there is a um, Masters League series now, and it's basically a ladder system where some of the best players try to compete against each other, and I was pitted against Gatekeeper for week 3. I'm going to commentate and spectate my own matches. Now, uh, this map, this was the home match of Gatekeeper, and he chose Sidestep, which is like the most, it is the most popular map right now, let's not pussyfoot around that, it was created by Sourcecard. Uh, the league was created by Sourcecard as well, by the way, so he's uh, doing a lot to keep the competitive community together. And immediately, both of us, we're having uh, ourselves a nice England mirror match, or Great Britain, if you will. And immediately, uh, our builds right off the bat are pretty much similar. He's trying to send two scouts in to harass my engineer. But basically what you want to do is you want to get early lockdown and early hold of the oil derrick. Because it's going to provide you with a lot of income over, a lo over the course of a long game. So what I'm doing here is I'm spreading out my rifle scouts, um, if you check them up, to just uh, secure all the choke points. Because I know Gatekeeper likes early aggression. I know he likes doing that kind of stuff. So my stationary riflemen are easily making minced meat out of this. And my engineer is completely safe. safe. Also, I'm always making a point to capture the bunker first, the pillbox, because it actually provides you with some defense, whereas uh, the oil derrick doesn't, and it's, it would allow for the engineer to get sniped. Anyway, so um, uh, one thing I really want to talk about this here is um, the, differ uh, the difference that scouting makes, because we're both going for really, really similar builds. Uh, like the first two minutes or so are complete mirror match, so both of us are having um, an ore refinery out, barracks out early, uh, and a war factory, and both of us have rushed a ranger. But what I want to teach you about is uh, the, the importance of unit preservation and scouting. Because right now Gatekeeper is uh, doing the same thing, he's also got a ranger, and rangers uh, have really great line of sight, really great for intercepting and poking, prying, being annoying, like li little wasps basically, or mosquitoes, mosquitoes and wheels. I'm also going for an additional light tank. The reason behind this is, I know the gatekeeper likes moving out his original MCV before having built a secondary MCV. So uh, during the, that period of time he's really vulnerable and can't get his production queue going. So what I'm trying is just uh, making the light tank wait here to intercept his, um, his primary MCV. He on the other hand scouted, scouted my base and immediately went to run out and is now going to scout my uh, my old derrick. Fortunately I've captured the pillbox, so his ranger actually gets taken out here. That already makes a big difference because I've got a ranger on the field, I've got the engineer on the field, and I just, I will now trail his every move. You'll see me just uncover some shroud, so I've already got a pretty good line of sight. I've got a pretty good read on his base here. I see the rocket soldiers moving in, see uh, a single light tank, so his build is probably going to be early aggression, which I kind of was expecting from him in the first place, but hey. So again, the ranger just um, trailing up and down, trying to scout for trying to scout for the army, trying to scout for flanks and whatnot. I see the rocket soldiers and now the thought process is, okay, he's going to uh, try and push my base early, or maybe intercept an expansion, the same way I'm trying to. So let's get a couple riflemen, because what, I, what he did there, he only built rocket soldiers. Look at their pathetic vision. Uh, he doesn't know that I'm trailing him with a ranger right now, but I am. And I actually get a really, I get a complete read and scout on what he's doing. So I'm just sending five riflemen up there, just, um, yeah. Also, he has moved out his, his original MCV, just as expected, but unfortunately, I was busy uh, snacking away at the rifle infantry, so he got to deploy anyway. Otherwise, I could have blocked. And now here, I am. Those five riflemen cost me 500, and those four rocket soldiers cost him 1,200. And I haven't lost a single one yet, so I've won that, that early engagement really hard already. Five harvesters for me, five harvesters for him, and he's floating. He could have produced a lot more. 
Gatekeeper really likes his uh, light tanks. They are kind of iffy because, yeah, the damage kind of sucks. Puny nerf guns. Still got a uh, light tank there. And now I see his base. Now I, I actually realized at that point that he had a base. So I had to, I had to run out. Couldn't stop the, him from establishing there. Whatever. Not a big deal. So my ranger is still being active on the map. Still trying to get some snipes. Still trying to get some pokes in. Got a rocket soldier array, which I kind of missed on the cast right now. Doesn't matter. And I went for an early service depot because I want a real expansion. I'm not a big fan of moving out your original con yard because it means that if it gets sniped, you have no means and ways of actually replenishing it. And then you're stuck on one base. Yeah, so here is my MCV. And the reason why I'm, I could produce so much more is check the combat tab at the point. I lost 200, I lost two riflemen, and he lost 3000. That's more than an MCV's worth. So yeah, unit preservation guys. Also here, he's trying to engage with light tanks into a, into a small rifle rocket blob, mixed soldiers. I'm pressing the scatter key just on time, and he loses at least one tank, yeah. The other one being severely wounded, so his push has already been crippled again. My ranger is back up to full health. And I've got a radar dome over him as well, so I'm really, really far ahead at this point. Starting to go double helipad just for the line of sight. He gets three nerf uh, to RC toy tanks with nerf guns into my back lines. And meanwhile, a storm is brewing here, but if I remember correctly, I scout this with my very first hind. Yeah, also, he tried to just blindly engage. So, you can already see the difference this is making. He's trying to blindly find engagements, whereas I'm just uh, methodically uh, running my ranger up and down, trying to find his army, trying to find a vector of, of attack. Here he has snuck three light tanks in, but not a big deal because they're damaged. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> what are they even gonna do? And now, my rifleman and rocket soldiers are closing in, and his tanks go down faster than the YouTube career of the Fine Brothers. That's it, that's a wrap. Here is trying to engage into my into my pillbox. Successfully so, but at a really high cost. Cost him like five yeah, four rocket soldiers, couple of rifles. Again, he hasn't been trading efficiently. Sure he sniped my old Eric, but mm, look at the economy. I have 10k assets over him. In terms of combat, yeah. That's 9,900, basically 10k to not even 1k. Just because of uh, just because of keeping my ranger alive, actually. What I'm doing here, uh, using the hind for line of sight and actually engaging, um, just just putting my infantry stationary to snipe his ore truck. So all his mining here is denied. The ore truck is down. I think like a light tank goes down as well. Yep, that's it. Now my infantry can die, die in peace. They've already done the damage. Also, look at my line of sight. Look at what I'm seeing. I am actually camping the expansion spot here. I am moving my ranger up and down. I am moving behind back and forth simply because I want to maintain vision control. The second hind is probably then going up, if I remember correctly. He's got a small insurgency here. Nothing I couldn't handle. And still, he tried to uh, get my uh, get my ranger finally, but to no avail. Here is another engagement, and what I'm trying to do here, I, I'm waiting with my Heinz before he actually, before the tanks take aggro. Because tanks are cheaper and a way better damage soak before the Heinz can come in and their chain guns just eat up infantry like, like nobody's business. Uh, again, you, you can see this trend kind of continuing. It's like I'm, I'm still 10k ahead in, in the assets killed. And it's only gonna get worse from here on. So it's, uh, I'm already 17k ahead in the assets. Rearming my Heinz. Yeah, this was a bit risky. Uh, my secondary MCV was moving up because I wanted to to get the top expansion. I was unprotected there for a bit because I didn't actually use my helis with the were landed. And had he had two two more Heinz or one more Heinz, he could actually have sniped my MCV. Not a big deal though because you can always build a, a medic to recapture it. And he is not doing like what he should have done here actually in this case. Finally he gets my, my primary scout. And that's 10 minutes into the game, right? And my ranger stayed alive for 10 minutes. It, it has provided me with so much value. And it's, it's value that you can't really measure in terms of credits. 
but just in terms of sheer scout efficiency, if you will. Now he's trying to get my expansion, but again, I've got the Heinz set up. And the line of sight is so pathetic on, uh, on riflemen and rocket soldiers that this is not a big deal. Here we have another engagement, but I've got a wall of infantry set up here, nicely vetted. So again, he's trading not cost efficiently. Another blob is ready. Here, ah, uh, yeah, that was kind of nice. He tried to get me with a uh, with a hind crash, but Conyard was already repaired, way past that point. So I'm having triple refinery here, and something that actually stifled my eco. Uh, that really, that got that was really bad by me. I didn't notice this. Sometimes harvests can like block themselves, whatever. That cost me a lot of money. So I was like, why isn't my cash trickling in? I'm basically bank. Oh no, I was floating this uh, almost 8k. <laughs> Never mind. Disregard. I've already got a sizable hind fleet up. Sure, he's also tacked up, but what does he have? Look at this. Look at his map control. It's actually horrible at, at, at his part. At this stage in the game, he's already pretty much down and out. Down for the count, at least. And I'm going for medium tanks because Gatekeeper really likes helicopters and you don't want to go mass, like mass artillery versus hides. It just doesn't work in, ter in terms of cost efficiency. He's also only got one helipad, so that's really bad by him. I, I mean, not, not badly played, it's just it sucks for him. He can't get... At this point, he's relegated to two out of six expansion slots in this map. And he's basically done for. Again, trying to get my artillery. This artillery, I'm not building it for the damage. Not at all. I'm actually just building it to force the engagement. Because I want him to come out of his, defense, uh, of his de uh, defensible position. I didn't know that there was no con yet. Because one thing with Heinz is, you can't really go into a base with Heinz. You'll, you'll see me linger around Belfield for the most part. Oh, that was bad. That was really, really bad miss micro there. Failed, failed rally point. So I'm poking away this ore refinery to just force the engagement. And you'll notice I only have a single artillery. I don't need this for the damage. Not at all. And now I'm taking the fourth expansion slot and at this point I'm also locking down his uh, original ore patch and he's pretty much done for. So I'm relegating most of my production to here. I know that there can still be an all-in push bottom side. Don't know the size of his army as of now. But I've got a giant hind fleet. Uh, this hind actually gets stuck on his hinds. That was kind of, kind of hilarious. Oh yeah, that was a really beautiful forward scoutillery on my part. Now he's trying for engagement, but it's just riflemen and rocket soldiers and one mechanic for unspecified reasons. So the hinds again, hind micro. I'm just trying to select my targets and delete all the rocket soldiers from the equation because they're the ones doing the damage. So yeah, this has been a very standard match, like in, in terms of the playstyle, but um, this can be very effective. I teched up earlier than him, I took map control and kind of just strangled him out of the game. I'm having a complete stranglehold here. This is his last MCV. At this point, I... yeah, with Heinz you can't scout into a base, because if there is an AA gun pop, you're gonna lose everything. So at this point, I don't know whether that's his original colony or not, but it is. Spoiler alert! Yeah, so he goes down in a blazing glory. All his helis fall out of the skies like flies. Tira, that was kind of bad. I was kind of in the outskirts of the AA gun, but he had no vision for some time. And then he surrenders regardless, because this was completely over. I had this on lockdown. There was my secondary MCB coming up and taking the fourth expansion slot. I just had so much more eco than him outpositioned him basically and uh, all this dates back to just keeping my initial ranger alive. Yeah, look at this. Huge difference also in terms of combat. Um, 30k to 50k basically a 20k difference in terms of kills and most of that just stems from um, well knowing where his army is and what his army composition is. So use scout units, keep tabs on, on your opponent. Alright that's it for part one and we're gonna be back with the rematch. See you in a second. And we're back with round two. 
and this time it was time for my home match. And I chose Behind the Veil, which has recently become one of my favorite 1v1 maps. Real fun to play, lots of strategic options, lots of riches to abuse every units over. <laughs> anyway, a uh, pretty good map, uh, designed by Corrida, who is also having his own YouTube channel, which is currently on hold, I guess. And yeah, Gatekeeper's, uh, Gatekeeper's aggressive playstyle really comes to shine here on this map, but you'll see. Again, nothing out of the ordinary right now, we're both scouting. By the way, in case you don't know the rules, uh, you start with 5k, just a regular MCV start, no light support allowed. Also, you have to start, obviously no crates, but in the Masters Division, you have to play with Shroud on. And this means that you actually have to uncover most of the map. I mean, Fog of War is standard, but Shroud is a bit trickier. A much trickier beast to tame because you actually have to know the maps and you have to know them really well like for example those oil derricks. So what I'm trying here is I'm sending three rifles down there, detachment, small detachment right there, and one of them is actually go into the back lines here. So those two are just the di diversion and the third one, you'll see, is actually going to sneak up here to try and, uh, to try and snipe the NG. And fortunately, I'm just outside the vision range, barely making it. Yeah, also here playing super defensively, uh, setting up my infantry all around so my engineer can't get sniped. Because losing an early 500 is a really big deal, way bigger than, you, than what you might imagine. And I know that he hasn't sneaked anything in, he hasn't snuck anything because I've got my rifle infantry there. In terms of faction, um, he actually went... Uh, yeah, he actually set his faction to England, which you're allowed to do only once per season. You're allowed to, to say at the start of the season, okay, I'm either playing a fixed faction, which he did, it's England for him, or uh, you can go with random, so you're gonna have a different faction every time, which I did. And this, is, this might se seem a bit odd, double ranger, but you'll see, this will come into play very shortly. Uh, so one of the rangers is just going to pick up the engineer, and rangers are just so good, so so much utility, one passenger slot. And this ranger is actually having a rifle. So I'm seeing his uh, engine, his ranger come in and I know it must have the engineer loaded up. So I'm using this ranger to block. So I'm completely walling him off. He has nowhere to go. And the double ranger has already paid off. Set him back, cost him his early scout again. Uh, way bigger a deal than what you might imagine. So one of those has a... Oh, one of those is actually currently empty and the other one has the engineer. This was maybe a bit too obvious. I didn't know his light tank was out as well. So I tried to go for the capture, but he had a light tank. And this rifleman has actually denied him from getting the wild Eric. Or at least scared him away for the time being. So he's on four harvesters. I am... yeah, I'm on four as well. And I've expanded a bit early to the middle. And my tech route this time is going to be a bit different. I'm going service depot first. And it was kind of a greedy build because I wanted to have that second MCV out relatively early. Gets a nice scout again. Okay, and what I'm doing here is I'm packing up rocket soldiers into my two rangers to kind of make an, a makeshift AT, makeshift uh, mobile response team in terms of AT, because I know he likes his light tanks. And Rangers are just so good at picking off unprotected uh, single infantry units. Plus they've got a great line of sight and a really huge mobility. This map, uh, something that actually doesn't factor in very often, but this map has a lot of roads and roads give you like, I think it's a 25% speed increase. Actually a big deal. So I'm unloading my rocket soldiers here, trying to snipe his light tank. He's yeah, he's on the foot, he has to run. Double light tanks, he tried to harass this oil direct down and I was trying for the other one. And I have my second MCV already, whereas he's going for early Heinz this time. And early Heinz can be quite deadly, especially versus like infantry play, infantry centric playstyles. But you'll see. And this time he did a really good job at applying pressure at all fronts. Uh, there's, there's a weird bug where sometimes rocket soldiers can't shoot to the north, they're actually going to miss. And this was, this bug was actually giving me a lot of trouble here because 
if it weren't for those two missed rockets, he, uh, both those tanks would have been killed and he wouldn't have scouted my early expansion. So those minor, minor details actually had a really big impact. So he has scouted my early expansion and now he's just waiting to get an army up and immediately try to kill it off. I see the early Heinz here, so I know what to expect. So I'm mixing in lots of rock soldiers at this point, simply to deny the Heinz. Uh, this was kind of a mistake. I was, I think, busy placing power plants and moving my army down, down south and actually ran both my rangers into the line of fire. Pretty unfortunate, but hey, it happens. So I've got double tech up and he went for triple helipad. So he, he, that's when you know someone is committed to behind play. His um, light tanks were really, really up front. So I actually got a couple of good snipes. Medium tank didn't move back in time though. This was kind of bad of me. I tried to pick off the uh, rocket soldiers one by one. Failed miserably. So my, my army was quite decimated at the time being, but fortunately he again did the same mistake. Just sending his light tanks way, way too far ahead. Far ahead of the flock. And he actually is trying to DPS down my oil dark. But he sees that there is too much AT and it's not gonna amount to anything. I've also um, positioned a mine layer here. And the mine layer is to deny... Actually, my first plan was to deny this ore field here. But yeah. He barely gets to gets out with his two light tanks and that's just a field die from a rocket soldier there, getting an easy double kill. There we go. Also obtaining veteran C2 with the in the process. And now he's finally that's not his expansion again. He's doing the risky thing and moving out his original MCV. Don't like it too much, leaves you so vulnerable. Now his three hinds are starting to snipe my power. But that's not a big deal because I always am like, what, 200 over power? Yeah, he killed 300 power and I'm still, I'm still in the clear. So now the, uh, I'm deploying my mine belt, it is commencing. But what I actually am not aware of again is that he moved his original conyard and has actually no, pro no protection here and can't even, he couldn't rebuild base defenses at that point, right? So it would be a good plan to snipe them, but instead I'm rushing tech. And I'm not just talking about tech center rush, I'm, I'm talking full-on tech center route. Uh, full-on high-tech route. Because, um, yeah, you'll, you'll see why I'm actually do why I'm doing this. So here are a couple of artilleries because I know I need blob killers. Shortly, shortly out of power there. Didn't pay my electric bills. Verizon was pissed with me. Alright, he's uh, going for more and more. Barracks units, his infantry blob is getting quite formidable here, and I have rushed a nuke. As you may or may not be aware, this is an investment of 2.5k. So uh, yeah, this doesn't do anything until until nine minutes in if you can hold it. That is, so it's a really really risky move on this map. He snipes my oil derricks, really smart, but he hasn't taken his own oil derricks, so now we're on even footing. Now finally, that's what I wanted for Christmas. That's my first longbow out there. Longbow is now going on a hind hunt. I see the rocket soldiers, so I immediately pull back. Now, um, longbows don't have a great turn rate, but they have actually some decent speed. Again, almost sniping, and yeah, this Derek got so low that he actually managed to snipe it with his last breath. So here, he's gotten a way bigger army out than I thought. And the reason for that, for that being that he didn't actually invest in more tech. He also doesn't have the expansion yet, so it, it's kind of... What he's doing here is a power spike build, which is trying to um, prevent me from expanding any further or taking any further by applying too much pressure. But once those resources have run dry, his production will actually fall behind mine. And speaking of mine... Mines. Lots of mines right there. And uh, it's still going gonna come into play. Also, longbows, really good line of sight. You're never in the dark with those guys. And he's trying to uh, just snipe them, but it's it's a bad trade to trade one for one um, with a hind versus an artillery. So this is completely shut down now. He's tried to wall off, but he actually wasn't aware of the mines, I believe. Getting a free tank here. 
but again this blob is way more formidable than I thought and also my mix was just so bad because I had lots of rock soldiers in there but barely any riflemen. So what happened there was that he actually, yeah, his infantry just pushed through mine. I had a bad composition, that's all. And this MCV, this was a third MCV that was initially supposed to go down bottom left and just try to s strangle him in the eco department, but it didn't happen. Now well, that was really bad as well, just I tried to suicide my Heinz in, didn't get it. So I have three longbows now, and that's enough to start sniping some medium tanks. Problem is the atrocious rate of fire. Tiny was built over there. Yep. So I, remember, I still got the tech advantage. And what saves me here is this single artillery in the back lines. He can't get to it in time. And it actually kills most of my stuff. Plus, the longbows make short work of, the, of his hides. Yeah, so the longbows are purely... Uh, the reason I built them was purely for anti-air. And it worked out pretty nicely. Artillery is Tanya. Yeah. I'm pretty much... Um, what I lost there was all my, my only helipad, so I couldn't rearm those longbows in time. A bit unfortunate, but I retained the eco. Retained my pointless third condyard. And the nuke, which is currently powered down. Yeah, so with this build, look, what he's doing here is he's constantly putting the aggression on, but he's not really gaining anything from it, because he snipes a couple, like a couple power plants, he snipes some stuff, but eventually he's just gonna fall behind because I'm winning the tech race. Like, they're at uh, 2.30 left on the GPS timer and 5.30 left on the nuke timer. So he's playing against the clock here with his early mid-game power spike build. Finally getting some more helipads, rearming. He's trying to snipe my power at the cost of a hind, but uh, yeah, sniping the power was an odd choice. I don't know. It uh, doesn't provide him with much benefit because a, a single power plant is so easily rebuilt. It's 300, it's whatever. And those infantry blobs that I'm building here, they are mostly cheap riflemen and they're basically cannon fodder for the hinds. Because I want the hinds to be out of ammo constantly. So what I'm doing is just spamming lots of riflemen and making him waste his ammo so he has to rearm again. So now I see the tank incursion and fortunately I've got a couple longbows. I've also got a moderately sized army here. Uh, longbows are fairly decent versus armor. But they're not on MIG levels if you compare the damage, but they're okay. So those five tanks didn't really do much. Nothing accomplished. Uh, however, here he got line of sight and he sent in five spies. Keep in mind he's England, so spies are, yeah, well, 250. So cheap, right? So what he went for was, yeah, my refinery. I got 500 there. My power, really annoying. And the last spy, I think I intercepted. So fortunately, he could have gone for veterancy actually if he had found a barracks or a war factory, which would have been really scary, especially my helipads. But instead it just decides to lock my power, a bit annoying. And there's one more spy, I think that also still drained my power, I can't remember. Yep, there we go. Low power mode again, quite annoying. But frankly, not too relevant, just stifling my production for a bit. He could actually have gotten a spy into my nuke, which would have reset the countdown, that would have been obnoxious. So the only thing, I didn't really realize that he didn't have the con out there, otherwise I would have just gotten an army up and basically pushed this. So it looks like he's having more army out, and that's just because his infrastructure is so poor compared to mine. Look at my power farms, look at uh, my base defenses versus he only has army. And it, like, that playstyle can work, don't get me wrong, it's a, it's a really good playstyle to be aggressive, to just always put on the pressure. But it's not guaranteed to work, you're going to, like, the, there is basically a power triangle. Where um, early aggression loses to tech, 
tech loses to to mass expansions, and mass expansions lose to tech again, uh, lose to uh, lose to early aggression again. So there's kind of this power triangle going on. Here, I've taken some very horrible trades, but fortunately, my third pointless MCB survives. Also, longbows are fairly uh, fairly tanky for air for an air unit. But again, I've underestimated the size of his army because he well. He invested in nothing but army. I've gotten a counter spy up myself, but being France, my spies are a lot, a lot more expensive. Uh, keep in mind this this tiny uh, this Karma pillbox here is a red blip, which indicates that Tanya is inside. Gonna come into play. My scout is again went a bit too far forward. Uh, here I went for a mobile gap cherry because just why not? It's annoying, slightly annoying for him. Gets my pointless conyard and trades it for Heinz. And my longbows are starting to get some really good veterancy. Veterancy 2 longbows are actually some of the... They are actually really ridiculously fast for how tanky they are. So that's when... That's the point where they get really actually viable. Like, on their own merit, they're not that great. But they have their niche uses. Here I'm doing the same thing, keeping out of rocket fire and trying to snipe tanks. But with the atrocious rate of fire, there like Mix would have obliterated tanks, but yeah, with longbows it just takes forever because their HE missiles just take so long to build uh, to to release. And here he's got another army up. Again, I'm really underestimating how much he's putting into army. Really nice pressure, and now all my longbows are out of ammo. Really unfortunate. Tried to go for a spy snipe, but was killed off immediately. But Here's Tanya, and she obli she basically obliterates the army here, getting so much value. So now he's focusing my camo pillbox, and what I should have done is um, evacuated Tanya, but I didn't do so in time. Don't know why. It was a bit of a misplay. But still, all of his rocket soldiers went down there. And here I've got a mobile radar jammer. That's something I should have built ages ago, because he really relies on the... He really relies on rocket soldiers for his DPS in the in the infantry blobs. Their so mobile radar jammers are super underutilized, but one of the best units in the game actually, uh, in terms of cost efficiency. So again, sending some Heinz in, and they're oh, as as you, per usual they're just getting intercepted or scared away by my longbows, so they have no business being here. Yeah. Now he's fallen really behind. I've got my NAF set up, so look at this. I see everything. I see his every move. I see he doesn't even have an army anymore. All, all he really has is this infantry blob there, which I'm kind of guesstimating is going to contain a lot of rocket soldiers, and he's got like four hinds. So I'm pulling my harvesters. This is a move that you can easily do on this map because mm, after, after a while when the ore patches are gobbled up, you only need one or two harvesters at each ore patch. But early on you want more, simply because you might want to get the, to the ore faster. My longbow is getting more and more veterancy. Just sniping uh, sniping Heinz left and right. Keeping his assets down. And at this point, let's look at the assets. It's already pretty, yeah, pretty decisive. I've got double the assets on him. I've got the nuke up. And this is a different composition now. I'm going for medium tanks backed up by lots of riflemen. Because I've seen his um, infantry based playstyle and I should have done this a long time ago. He's trying to move out and he's running right into my mind belt. Plonk, plonk. And there goes his last MCV. I didn't know it was his last MCV. <laughs> but hey. Now I'm nuking the AA gun so I can finally go in there. Getting picks on, on all fronts and I've got my army here plus the harvesters to tank. Here he's got a lot of infantry. But now finally I've got the Riflemen to make this work. The Riflemen are killing it. Now my longbows are just hunting for his last hind. There we go. My infantry reigns supreme there. Longbow's air dominance has been maintained and he has nothing left. He could have rebuilt the end and here is my last push. That was his last straw, he doesn't have the eco anymore. The game's over. Mm, so what did we learn from this? Uh, 
In this game, it was much. It was not so much about scouting. It was about countering the build that he offered. Longbows are super niche, but I use them to to always um, snipe at, away at the hinds. And he invested lots into early aggression, which was really good. He kept me down, and he actually had a um, had a shot at winning this game. I felt like around minute 12 or so when he started started pushing in with the big army after I had to rearm my longbows. He actually came close to wiping out my expansion and then it would have gotten worse for me. But fortunately Tanya was there to save the day. Yeah, um, that was a really tough game and I think the games got, uh, with the exception of week 4, got a lot tougher after this even. So the, the first uh, two rounds were kind of the warm-up rounds, but this is when shit started hitting the fan. Anyway, uh, Chichi, thanks for watching this. I hope you've learned something in terms of speed, in terms of build order, in terms of in terms of how to use units, counter systems, in terms of micro macro. Um, I'm actually probably going to make a tutorial on those RTS terms because someone was asking me about it. But I'm guessing that most people you know the basic terms like what is what is micro, it's unit micro management, or what is macro, it's uh, getting yeah getting your macro game up is basically expansions, getting your eco set up properly, getting your production set up properly. So the uh, management of army on a, on a grand scale, as opposed to micro being being uh, the management of army on a small scale. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it and I'll see you guys next time. Five Aces out.